Hey, good afternoon and welcome to the jump seat. Glad to be back here with you all again. Uh, it's hard to believe it's been another two weeks. Uh, and um, for those of you who may in fact be joining us for the very first time, I wanna say welcome. Uh, for you, those who don't know, the jump seat is a regular spotlight bringing you key industry thought leaders, subject matter experts, and really next generation insight into uh, those things affecting your fire departments uh, around the country and around the world. It's hosted by myself, uh, David Durstein. Uh, uh, I'm a, a volunteer firefighter myself, been through the ringer uh, as a paid firefighter and uh, a, uh, a part-timer there. Uh, and really the, the jump seats gauge to bring you that insight and inlook into uh, new, uh, um, I would say, uh, things impacting the fire service as well as uh, you know, reflecting on uh, the 200 years of tradition that we are based upon uh, in the fire service as a whole. So welcome to the jump seat. We got a great show for you here today, and we're going to talk about training and training opportunities that are coming towards you. But really, um, before I jump into that, uh, a lot has happened in the last two weeks in the fire service. And um, you really think about really in the last 48 hours, some of the craziness in, in Miami. Uh, and so I really want to take a minute and just recognize um, the folks of Miami-Dade Fire and Rescue for um, their response to this really tragic collapse that happened uh, uh, down there in their territory. Um, you know, it's an amazing uh, to see some of the video. Obviously, today, having access to uh, some of the news feeds and some of the information almost instantaneously uh, really puts um, it into perspective for a lot of those folks watching, I'll say, in the common public, but also... Um, the reality from a first responder perspective and what would you do if that happened in your area or in your territory? And so um, I think today's show and, and looking at opportunities to train and opportunities to get with some of the best of the best in the industry is really um, kind of a key piece of how you can be prepared and how you can prep for those unforeseen incidences as, as we're seeing right now unfold in Miami. So my hat's off to, to all those involved uh, and uh, my heart goes out to all those um, impacted, those families that were devastated by uh, the happenings there as well. So um, keep up the good work down there in Miami and uh, uh, Miami-Dade and, and uh, or we're uh, praying for all your safety, but uh, you can uh, save as many lives as possible there as well. I also take these opportunities usually on a regular basis to uh, to share some news within the fire service industry. And actually today is no different than any other. Uh, I'm actually gonna share my screen here really quick. And I wanna give a shout out to my friends up north at Fort Gary Fire Apparatus. Those of you who uh, have been a regular followers of the jump seat uh, will probably remember, we actually did a tour of Fort Gary and walk around to one of their trucks. One of our first episodes when we started this uh, over a year ago now, in our first season. So uh, Brian Nash and the, and the team at Fort Gary gave us a good tour of one of their trucks that was a demo last year. And uh, ironically, this is uh, their brand new demo. It happens to be a SAM demo, which uh, those of you who follow know I love our SAM demos and the SAM opportunities actually out there. This is a really unique design and uh, one you don't see every day with an enclosed top mount. Uh, and they've got their SAM controls uh, right there inside uh, that top mount enclosure for um, those cold weather conditions up there in Canada. So um, I do know this truck is hitting the streets here, going to be doing a demo circuit. So if you want more information, uh, jump out and uh, visit the guys at Fort Gary Fire Trucks or reach out to them directly. They love to come out and uh, and share that with them. And no, they're not a sponsor, but they do have my SAM system that we absolutely love and uh, I think it's going to make a big impact uh, to many of those departments actually out there. So. Uh, Brian Nash, you guys at Fort Gary, keep up the great work. Uh, thanks for your support. And uh, I look forward to uh, seeing that truck on the streets here in the very near future. With that being said, um, you know, I mentioned we've got a great show today. Um, I've got an, a, a good friend of mine as a guest uh, who I'm honored to actually have on the show. And uh, so I think without further ado, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring him right on here now. So uh, Eric Schlett, from FDIC International. Welcome to the Jump Seat. How are you? Thanks, Dave. I'm doing well. And, um, you know, before we get started, uh, you know, it's uh, a point in time, right, for us to think about the tragedy of what's happened with the condo collapse. And our hearts go out to 
uh, those that ha have lost their lives there, and keeping you know positive thinking that uh, hope hopefully they can get some rescues there, and naturally for the first responders, firefighters that are there doing the great work uh, that they are. So God bless them, and uh, please keep an eye and, and keep them in your thoughts and prayers, please. No, absolutely. And, you know, I, I look at that that whole incident, and uh, I really have, have uh, you know multiple uh, uh, thoughts that hit that. One is you know the firefighter side of me. The other one's just the personal humanitarian side of me. But really, what a great job uh, Miami Dade has been doing them down there. I don't know if you've been following it at all, Eric, but uh, I think that's a, a big piece. And uh, I, I don't know how many of those. Do you, do you know? Do you have some Miami Dade instructors that uh, that teach? Yeah, we do. We, we we have several. We have a really strong uh, cadre uh, of writers, instructors that, at, at FDIC, folks that are teach teach for us to webcast. I'm sure we're going to get uh, a lot of material out of this. That's going to be important for us to learn. You know, what we do is lessons learned, Dave. It's it's for firefighters by firefighters, right? Uh, and, and that's really what we where we hang our hat or our helmet, if you will, uh, making sure that we're trying to save lives right we want to train folks so they can train others yeah absolutely uh and i think uh you know i i told you eric hey we might get comments that come in from here and uh i want to just give a shout out here really quick to jason uh from canada hey jason defossi and he is pumped because he said he's actually coming to fdic awesome. in august so uh, we love having this Canadian brother, and I think we're going to mention that here a little bit later in the show as well. So, yeah. Jason, uh, we love that you're on here, and uh, we can't wait to see you uh, in person there. Yeah. Hey, hey uh, Jason, make sure you stop by my office, uh, you know, and and uh, say hello. Uh, we we love our Canadian cousins who come down, and um, we're we're looking forward, to, and and we're really happy that we're here, and the border is going to be really opening up for more and more of our Canadian. Uh, members who have traditionally come to be down here with us so the timing is just right absolutely absolutely so those, so those of you who are just joining us here i'm with eric schlett he's the senior vp with clarion events and fdic international and uh eric fdic is right around the corner here for us but you know tell us a little bit about fdic where does it come from and and what is the goal of fdic so FDIC is a 90 year old um, event, right? And it really started out in a, a field in Ohio where some of the um, uh, manufacturers got together to teach firefighters how to use their equipment. And uh, for the last 21 years, I've been you know, blessed with the responsibility of carrying um, that mission forward. And hopefully we'll be doing it for a lot more years. Uh, and it's grown substantially, right? What our business is about is training firefighters so that they can learn lessons from uh, their fellow firefighters, instructors, so that they can then take that knowledge that they gain back at FDIC and bring it back to their departments to help others. You know, it, it's the typical stuff uh, that's important to us, preserving their own lives so they can get home at the end of their shift taking care of their brother and sister firefighters and protecting the property and the communities that they serve. So, you know, and that all sounds good and well, but, you know, we take it to a different level, Dave, with our hands-on training. You know, we invest significantly in that and making sure that we're bringing real life fire situations and fire ground operations so that we can train folks in the best practices and, um, between that, the workshops, and then, you know, the in-room classes, uh, that's that's great in and of itself. And then you bring in, you know, typically we have 800 booths at FDIC or, or, or vendors that are there showing their wares and teaching firefighters about their product in over 800,000 uh, square feet of space. You know, this year we expect that to be more like 680 to 700 vendors. So, you know, it will be a little different. This year's an anomaly, but, uh, you know, it, it's a substantial amount of, of, uh, of product that's being showed in the classrooms. We're doing the same thing we've always done, 200 plus classrooms. Wow. Well, 200 plus classrooms. First off, I don't know of any other training event where you got 200 plus classrooms and classes going on. Eric, what are some of those maybe uh, key trainings? Like if, I, if I'm attending for the very first time or I'm thinking about coming, what would you say are the don't miss classes that you gotta oh, gotta be at? 
<laughs> there's so many of them. It would really be, be an injustice for me to just name a few. And I think a lot of times the way fire departments, um, uh, you know, tackle this is maybe there's four members coming from their department and, you know, with classes starting, you know, with hands-on training on Monday and Tuesday, you know, we, we have about 20 to 25 sessions of those. So they'll split those up into, you know, four hour evolutions. Um, you know, we used to do um, structural collapse. It's something that we haven't done uh, recently, but a brand new one that we really like is uh, extrication from routine to complex. Uh, heavy uh, vehicle extrication is another. Active shooter is, seem, you know, sadly it seems to be an important issue. And, you know, we get these things from the firefighters themselves based on, you know, what they're handling and what they're seeing. You know, another uh, class is uh, man versus machinery. It, it, it's a really great class, and that's led by uh, – Captain uh, Gregory uh, out of uh, FDNY is another terrific class. But then you'll get your your, your standard and ordinary uh, in classroom stuff, which could be um, ordinary construction hazards uh, or busting through recruitment and retention to to deal with those things. So we cover a cadre of stuff, and I think you know, when departments come with uh, four, you know, four members, you know, they're going to split that up. There's no track that we're on. You go to the classes that you choose. And um, it's one of the reasons why we get repeat people, you know, coming back every year because there's just so much knowledge taught there. And Dave, I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't say, I think part of the thing is the networking and just talking to one another, brother or sister firefighter on what's happening in their department and the things that they're facing. And, you know, you're, you're learning hard all day long and then you're relaxing a little bit, maybe with a, a cocktail, maybe over a dinner or coffee, but you know, the learning continues throughout the week. And, and that's the beauty of FDIC. Yeah, I, I think you hit the nail on the head there. Is it? It's that uh, uh, that chance to interact, that chance to share uh, intelligence and meet new people that now you can tap into in the future because you've built that relationship and friendship uh, from those training events. Um, and, and to me, I mean, in my 20 years of being around the industry and being at FDIC, those are some of the most valuable pieces uh, of the puzzle for me because I can pick up the phone and call a friend from the West Coast. I could pick up the phone and call somebody from FDNY uh, or anywhere around the world even uh, and find out, you know, hey, we talked about this one time. What is it that you guys did? How did you do that? What were those those cautions you gave me? Right. And so I think um, to me, that's a great a, a great benefit and uh, something that that uh, is invaluable other than just the training that you get from from getting your hands dirty on a regular basis. So, Eric, when you think about it, too, um, you know, I heard you mention, um, hey, there's a lot of hands on for the firefighter. You mentioned a little bit about maybe some for the officers. Who who should actually attend? Is it really geared for officers? Is it really geared for, for the yeah, firefighter I, alone? I, so it, it's different, Dave, right? I mean, we want to train firefighters, right? So probably if you're a probationary firefighter, uh, you know, you have to have some basic stuff and you're going to need to go to your chief or your officer level folks to get permission to come and participate in the hands on training. But a lot of what we do is kind of think about the train, the person responsible for training. Right. And because it, it, in the United States and Canada around the world, training officer might mean different things, right? You may be a captain, you may be a lieutenant, but if you're somehow involved in training and educating your team, you want to be here, right? Because you're going to get the cutting edge stuff that you need to bring back to your department so that they can, you know, have this knowledge and, and, and you know, be able to do um, the best job that they can, you know, for themselves and for their department membership but it's not exclusively for the instructor, right? We definitely have management classes there, officer uh, level leadership classes are taught by you know guys like Rick Lasky who does an outstanding job. I think people stand in line sometimes to just hobnob with a guy like Bobby Halton, and we're blessed to have him as the leader of our content, right? 
you know, he, he and I have been working together for nearly 15 years on this event. And he's legendary because he's a straight shooter, but he doesn't just talk the talk. That man has walked the walk. You know, he, the things that he's uh, been involved in as a firefighter and fire chief uh, are remarkable. Plus, when he doesn't know something, he knows where to go to get it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Bobby, uh, Bobby's just incredible. I love the man. And actually, I don't know if you know it, he actually joined us here in the jump seat uh, back on 9-11. So um, I, I reached out to him uh, for that because I couldn't think of a better person to sit here uh, on that crazy day to come live to the fire service other than Bobby. And so, uh, you know, love the guy and I appreciate uh, my friendship with him, but also uh, his willingness to just jump on and, and uh, really uh, give words of encouragement as well as uh, be that straight shooter in voice of the fire service uh, that he is. So that's uh, yeah. all. I'll, 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 I'll give you a little background. Um, you know, I, I'm sure you have a good relationship with Bobby, as do I, right? But Bobby's never turned down an interview. Anytime Bobby <laughs> wants to be in front of the camera, that guy, <laughs> he, he loves the camera and the camera loves him. <laughs> Oh, man. I tell you what, Bobby's one of those guys you can talk to all afternoon. But enough about Bobby. Let's go back to FDIC here really quick. And so, um, you know, obviously, unfortunately, FDIC got canceled last year in 2020 with uh, all the craziness of the COVID pandemic and and uh, really some of that continuing on to delaying this year. You know, what can we expect? What can uh, those firefighters come into FDIC already or those who are on the fence? What can they expect, Eric? So, so it's going to be the traditional FDIC. It's obviously at a different time of year. You, you know, they've so just kind of going through the steps. We missed last year, and we were going to try to do something in September. It was going to be something different and a, a little bit pared down. But because the pandemic raged on September of last year, we couldn't wind up doing that. So we put our focus and attention on to April of this current year. And then when the pandemic continued to rage on, we just felt it was the right thing to do, the most responsible thing to do. Uh, we're in the life safety business not to push that envelope. We actually got um, quite a bit of feedback from the fire service, uh, firefighters, I should say, right? Who were pretty disappointed in our, in our um, option not to do it because they need the training. They want the training. Um, and they felt like we're out there every day in the pandemic and we're fighting this. And if we need to learn, you know, we need you guys to put this on. Anyway, uh, we still thought the right course of action was to push it off. You know, we've been working with uh, healthcare and, and medical direction throughout this thing to give us, you know, the best advice. And they said, you know, as late in the summer, um, w w we feel pretty confident that it'll be OK based on you know, the trajectory of the vaccinations and, and the waning of uh, the virus here in the States. So that was kind of the advice. So we looked at August and, and, you know, at one point we had it later in August, then the pattern came in well for us to be, you know, that August 2nd through the 7th. It's the traditional pattern, the Monday through the Saturday, and it just made a lot of sense. So what I can tell you is what to expect. You can expect everything that you traditionally get at FDIC. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll be doing the typical special events, the National Fall and Firefighters Foundation, Stair Climb, which Pierce, you know, is, is a gracious sponsor of that. And that's a really important event. The Fools Brotherhood Bash on the Wednesday night. Um, the Firefighters for Cancer are going to be there. You know, so every, uh, also the Indianapolis Fire Union Night on Friday night. So all of that great stuff is going to continue to happen as well as, like I said, all of that education. And, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, as of, so I'm still waiting for our report from this week, which uh, I will tell you, I had said on, uh, on uh, another vendor's podcast that, you know, we'd like to be, you know, about 15,000 to 16,000 before we get on show site. Traditionally, we're probably anywhere between 22 to 24,000 pre-registered attendees. As of last Friday, we were already over 15,000 pre-registered attendees. So that's telling me that based on our traditional walk-up of eight to 12,000 folks, 
Um, and those are people who are coming in for a day, maybe two days, just to kind of look at the uh, products and stuff on the show floor, not necessarily taking the hands-on training. You know, that's, I, I can see us being north of 20, somewhere between 20 and 22,000, which are, which I've been saying all along. I, I, I uh, a, and that's consistent with what the message we've heard from the firefighters themselves. Well, I tell you what, you know, as a as a vendor and manufacturer, I, I look forward to that. But I think, uh, you know, from a training aspect, having it available from, uh, um, you know, where it hasn't been. Regular training has not been available, even at the state and local regional level. So I think having the opportunity really gets uh, people a chance to want to get out and, and get their hands on it and continue that educational piece. You know, I think it's important in the fire service, fire service every day. I think you can probably relate, Eric, is that. It's always changing. Everything is different. You got to continue learning. And, um, you know, I find no better place to do it right now than FDIC. And so uh, I think uh, if you're watching and you're on the fence, I would say uh, get out and register. And so, Eric, with that, uh, are there spots, spots still available? I'm assuming there are. Oh, yeah. So, so you know, other than the hands-on training, right, everything for us is open. We don't run tracks where you have to register for a specific class only for hands-on training, but a lot of our hands-on training classes are nearly sold out, I, 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 you know, but when we have those types of situations, we may recommend a different class that has some of the same skill sets or whatnot, so our team is, you know, ready uh, to work with folks. So what, what, what we're most excited about, and this is kind of unique because, you know, we're usually dealing with, you know, north of 33,000 firefighters, 36,000. Well, the twenty, the 22,000 firefighters that are we're expecting for this year, those are folks that not only want to be there, they need to be there. And we're excited to give them the education that they're, they're craving. <clears throat> and if they're coming to see product, there's a reason they're coming for, to see product. It's not just on a whim. There's a real purpose to them doing it. And I'll tell you what, I, I've always very, felt very strongly about our brand because of what we do and the high quality we do it at. Um, and also the men and women that we're serving to do this. We feel it's a, a, an extremely important responsibility. So when they're saying we're coming and that's what the numbers are showing, we're glad to give them whatever we can. You know, Jason DeFossi just threw a comment out there again, and I love it, Jason. For those of you who are all watching right now, uh, I can see you all live. Feel free, if you have questions about FDIC for uh, uh, Mr. Schlett, fire away in the comments field, they do pop up, but Jason hit the nail on the head there. You know, failing to train is training to fail. And so um, there's a, there's no other opportunity like that out here. And, and Jason, I know uh, even threw another one in there that said, hey, it's the Super Bowl for instructors and that he's proud to have taught there. Uh, uh, so, Jason, I know they're looking forward to having you back in Indy. We're looking forward to having Canadians across the border uh, here in the very near future as well. And so when you look at those folks who are, who are planning to attend, how many – you know, what's the international status? I know in the past you've had a fair number of folks from Canada and from other places around the world. Um, what, what's that hold for them this year, Eric? So it really depends on what the State Department is allowing, right? So there are certain parts of the region that right now travel is restricted. So some of the folks that we get folks from all over the world. The vast majority of our, of our um, attendance comes from the U.S. and Canada, Canada though. Um, but you do get from South America, from Europe, from Southeast Asia, quite a few actually. So, um, you know, and even the Middle East. So we've been getting, and that's been a growing part of our audience. And what's great about it is they're coming here not just to see product, they're coming here for training and they're going to see the product, right? Because they want to use what the industry considers considers the best. And a lot of the world looks at what we're doing here in North America as the standard bearer for how to fight fires and the equipment that we use. So I, I think that's hats off to, you know, the instructor team who are, you know, firefighters from, you know, United States and Canada primarily. I mean, they do an amazing job. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And, um, 
I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing them. Hopefully we do get the Canadian borders. We can get more of the Canadian brothers down across uh, uh, the border there. And uh, Joey Don't forget Hayes. The Canadian sisters, Dave. Don't forget. And, and the sisters as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, uh, Joey, uh, uh, thanks for the comments there as well. Thanks for following us. And uh, uh, keep them coming. Keep them coming there. So, Eric, let's say uh, I am already registered. Uh, or I'm coming for the first time and I haven't registered yet. But after today's episode, I'm registering. How can I make the most of my FDIC experience? If I'm coming in there relatively new, I don't know what, what I'm really getting into. How can I make the most of it? Of course, go to the FDIC.com app. Oh, there's an app, <laughs> huh? No, so, so I, I, you know, I always think, you know, uh, plan your work and then work your plan, right? A anything. This is a big event. It, it, there's a lot to see and a lot to cover. So I would go online and I would look at the classes and try to outline um, where and when you want to plan to go to a specific thing. So if you went to um, the attend, Dave, I, you're probably not going to be able to see the classes on there unless you're registered. But once you're registered, you will see the times of the classes, right? And that's going to help folks plan what they're going to do on Monday, what they're going to do on Tuesday. Uh, the main program is huge and it's heart, you, you know, it's such a heartfelt great keynote speech and Bobby gives his typical fire and brimstone, you know, fireside, uh, hurrah, you know, charge them up type of speech, uh, and then turns it over to a keynote. And then it's all about learning, learning, learning. And, um, as most of the, the folks who are listening, who are firefighters will know, you know, this is a lifestyle for us, right? This is what we do. We wake up, we, we, we you know, we're firefighters. That, that That's where we are. Hey, listen, I'm a former volunteer. I still consider myself part of this great, great family. Um, but I don't do what you guys do each and every day. And, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm gobstopped by the things that you guys do. And I'm just part, uh, really happy to be a little part of what we do to help you all to, to be the best firefighters and fire instructors you can be. So it, it, it's an, it's an amazing thing, um, to be part of. So I would say you plan that. And then I would also go and look at the show floor and whether you do that on the app or the website circle, the, uh, the, the boots that you really, really want to see that you feel like you need to go and get product and plan it because, you know, with over 800,000 square feet, that's in two buildings and partly outside, you know, it's a lot of space to cover. So plan your mission and maybe take a water break in between. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, Joey said, Hey, reach out to some of those equipment uh, distributors or vendors in your area. They may have stuff going on. I know we want to see everybody come by the, uh, IDEX Fire and Safety booth for some hands-on uh, demonstrations, uh, as well as a chance to uh, see some, uh, you know, Hearst Jaws of Life in action there as well. I can't, I can't, I can't help but not give a little plug for us there. Uh, now, listen, you guys have a great product, and, and you guys do amazing stuff. Our demo area is becoming bigger and bigger too, Dave. Every year, more, more and more folks. And I, you know, you do some of your demos right in your booth. But, um, you know, I think, and part of what the hands-on training experience is, you're actually touching, feeling, using tools, you know, that you're going to use every day in a real-life situation. So there's nothing like that hands-on event, hands-on training, hands-on training at booths in the demo area where you can actually look, feel, and touch the products. It, it, it's it's a great, great thing. And then, and then the the firefighters typically stand around and talk about what they like, what they didn't like. They're talking to your engineers and you guys are learning and the firefighters are learning. And that's what this is all about, man. This is, that is what it's all about. Well, Eric, I, I want to say thank you for joining us today. Well, the show's coming here to an end and I really appreciate you taking the time uh, to share, you know, what we can expect this year at FDIC and uh, you know, John Costello, I have to say the exact same thing. It sounds exciting, and I hope to see you there, John. You've been a great follower of the show, and we love seeing you uh, each and every week. Uh, and uh, maybe we can actually meet in person there at FDIC. 
Let's uh, hey Dave, just before we go, because I know you're trying to wrap it up, but but yeah, I, 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 I'd be remiss if I didn't get a chance to thank you. But I also want to say, because I know some folks have asked, you know, what's the protocols and whatnot? You know, we're following CDC guidelines for anybody that is concerned. You know, um, if you're vac if you're fully vaccinated, no mask required. Um, if you're not, you know, uh, you it, it's recommended that you wear your mask. We're not going to stand at the door and ask you to provide an ID uh, or, or, or some sort of uh, situation where you're going to uh, present proof that you've been vaccinated. You know, we're all professionals. Uh, we're firefighters. We save lives. You're on the honor system for that. And be smart. If you're not vaccinated, wear your mask. No one's going to pass judgment. And um, if you are vaccinated, feel free to remove your mask and, and go about your business. And David, I, I want to really thank you for the opportunity to do this. You know, for a long, you've known me for a long time, and you know, I, I love you for for inviting me here, um, and for being such a, a, a great friend through the years. But this is my passion. I love doing this, and I'm so excited to get back at it. And that's what I'm hearing from the fire community. Let's do this. Let's kick this off. We have to start it sometime. Let's do it now. So we're going to do it in August, and we're going to have a hell of a good time. Well, uh, Eric, uh, what I'm hearing is the place to be in the entire world the first week of August is Indianapolis, Indiana, at the uh, Convention Center for FDIC International, right? Exactly. Exactly. Absolutely. Well, Eric, thank you again for joining. Uh, I really appreciate it. Hang on there. I'll be right back with you in a minute. But uh, I want to put a wrap to the show here today. Uh, thanks again, Eric. Um, hey. If this is your first time to the jump seat, uh, this we're actually going to be back here again on July 9th. So we're taking a little break here for the, the 4th of July holiday and for Canada Day. For those of you up in Canada, I think that's uh, coming up here as well. Uh, I hope you guys all have a, a great holiday. Don't miss us. We got an awesome, great show on the 9th of July. And then two weeks after that, uh, I'm going to be hitting the streets and we're going to do a field event uh, live from uh, Texas A&M at the uh, Teeks Industrial Fire School. Uh, you won't want to miss it. And uh, another great training opportunity that's actually out there. Uh, and I'll be live in person, uh, followed up after that at FDIC. So we've got a whole great lineup of shows here over the next uh, uh, several weeks. Uh, I hope you don't miss it. Um, like always, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I would ask that you find us and share us through Facebook and YouTube, uh, the IDEX Fire and Safety blog. Um, we also want to hear your ideas. You know what? Uh, I get the ideas for the show based upon you, similar to how they do the training at FDIC. So we love hearing your ideas and suggestions. Please feel free to email me, comment them here in the comments. We do follow up and, uh, and get back with you with uh, all of your comments uh, when questions are, in fact, asked. Uh, with that, thank you all very, very much for being here today. Uh, I can't wait to see you guys in two weeks again here on The Jump Seat.